Steve's gonna go take the crucifix away. All right, guys. So here we are at the Westwood School in Rudolph, Ohio. Yeah. Here we are. Another location, another night, another investigation. I'm very ready because this is going to be an interesting investigation. It was built in 1914. And so. it's been used for multiple things as well. Yeah. For a while, it was used for uh, apartments. And I heard it was a haunted attraction at one point. It was. And uh, Austin was also saying that there were several car accidents right out here on the corner, right in front of it. Uh, even as recently as five years ago, I think he was saying. Yeah, I mean, that's that's very true. Who knows how many spirits might be trapped here inside the Westwood School. I'm really excited to get inside the building, talk to Austin, and talk to the family that owns the building about some of the history and about some of the hauntings here. You guys ready to go in? Absolutely. Yeah, get this party started. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. This past year, I've had the sheriff department out here three times probably in a six month period of time because we have, there's a, a trailer out back that's kind of the caretaker of the property most of the time. And I would get calls, hey, there's somebody standing upstairs. I can see them in the window, they're looking out the window. Everything's always been locked up. We've never found any kind of trace of anybody. Uh, most recently was last spring, I was here uh, with the caretaker of the property and he said hey you got the key to the building can we go inside and there's a shelf in one of the classrooms upstairs that I, I think I would like to have if you can help me move it out I'm always a little uneasy of the building so I kind of let him you find out what room it's in and and I'll come help you when you find it right so I, I was just kind of standing back and I'm in the threshold of the door and the hallway and directly above me to my to my back is the staircase going up to the net, the final floor, the top floor. And directly above me, I heard heavy boot scrapes, right? on this, And I stepped further out in the hallway. And it's middle of the day, probably noon, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I hear these boot scrapes again. And I said, Tony, he's also Tony. Tony, hey, come here. I think I hear something. So he comes out to the door and he stands in the hallway with me. And it was it wasn't. It was like somebody was walking around up there and not trying to hide the fact that they were walking around up there. They weren't being quiet. He said, I don't know why you haven't called the sheriff yet. There's clearly somebody up there. Like, and uh, so I called the sheriff department. They were here within five minutes, four to six guys show up. They're like, all right, let's go through. So we go through, walk directly upstairs without, you know, I'm watching the building the whole time they're coming, right? Making sure I don't see any movement, somebody trying to move around. They come, we sweep the building and they're, like you're, you got to stop calling us if there's nothing going on. And I'm like, there, there was somebody up there. There was somebody. It was plain as day. It wasn't quiet. It was somebody stomping and dragging feet. Here we are. We are now inside of the Westwood School, and it's kind of interesting as we walk through here. There's a lot of paranormal activity relating to the school, some of it with the students and with the residual energy, but some of it not. And I specifically remember, you know, especially down here in the basement, this was a haunted attraction for 13 years or so, ending around 2006, and there's still props in here. Yeah. So this is definitely something that we're gonna have to check out and something we're gonna have to work around, but it also means that there may be some energy left behind from that as well. I've been investigating the school for about two years now. We were doing an EVP session or something and uh, this door behind me was actually shut and uh, we were hearing movement around uh, behind the door and all of a sudden I felt 
dirt and rocks hit my shoe. And I looked down and uh, I think Tony was there and a couple other people were there and they, we all looked down, saw the rock on my shoe and the dirt still on my shoe. It just really showed me that there was something that had the energy at least to be able to move something. And then, I mean, constantly this door is flung wide open uh, when it's wedged shut and I make sure to wedge it shut every single time I come here and it always happens. I have a friend randomly a Facebook acquaintance that has seen me post stuff about it and said, oh, I used to go to school there. And did you know the closet upstairs was used to as a bad closet for special needs kids? She, the way she explained it was that, you know, when the kids in the late 80s were acting up, they'd be put in the closet. And it was a, specifically a special, the special needs class, I guess. I didn't get into a ton of detail with it, but uh, it just kind of adds hearing bits and pieces from other people. Now what was interesting is, is that as we go up the floors, up through the floors of this school, we're going to have to keep in mind that a lot of the stuff doesn't look like a school anymore. Yeah. Uh, up until just 20, 2018, they were using this as an apartment building, and they have actual apartments built into what were the classrooms and things of that nature. So, so when we're walking through, we may come across things that look like kitchens and bathrooms and things that are more modern. Now. It's important to point out right now on this walkthrough, there is one part of the basement that Austin told us that we can go to that we're not going to go to on this walkthrough. We're going to wait until the investigation if we decide to go there. They don't normally let people back there and it's the auditorium area and that hallway where the rock was thrown from when Austin's foot was hit. Um, he told us that we can go back there if we'd want to investigate there. Now, we're not going to go back there now just because we want a fresh pallet. And also, as he said, it's decaying. It could be dangerous to go back there. There's a good chance that at least one of us may go in there and investigate, um, but we're not going to walk through there right now. When, uh, shortly after we had had this place for a few months, actually, there was a, a former tenant. Um, her name was Kelsey. And she had reached out to me on Facebook uh, and wanted to tell me an experience that she had. And she had actually told me that her daughter, um, because actually in all the apartments, they still have the old chalkboards up. And so her daughter um, was apparently talking to somebody and seeing somebody that she called the chalk man. And mom had no idea what, was, what that was all about. But uh, shortly after, apparently she started experiencing activity. Like the lights would turn on and off by themselves. And she's like, this is just what's been happening. And she sent me this, you know, long after she had been out of this place. But I know exactly which room it is. I think in here was like the actual room that that one little girl was called the Chalk Man. Yeah, it's one of these rooms up here. I think it was this one because he mentioned a cross. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a cross right there on the... It's interesting, board. you know, like when you walk into rooms, you find crosses or certain stones, you know, different, you know, different things like that. And people use for what they feel are protection, like, you know, like we found in a lot of different locations. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Generally, people leave those crosses and crucifixes when there's something there that they feel might be harmful to them or they feel like there's something there that might be affecting them right. in some form or fashion. So. Seeing that sitting there is generally a sign that there might be some sort of oppressive energy up here, or energy that at least affects people. Right. But like I said, Austin told us that people have been made, people have felt sick, people have felt affected to the point to where they had to leave, people have been scratched, people have had things pulled from them in this building, in this school. So it's definitely very telling that this is a room where they have the crucifix sitting right there. Maybe tonight during abandonment or whenever we're up here doing a, maybe doing a session all together, we'll uh, remove it from the room and see if we get a response from that. Yeah. See if that affects the energy in here. We had a friend called Joe named Joe Warner that came out here uh, and was doing a live stream. And he actually did a couple of them out here. Two of the live feeds, he had a body camera with a body mic, and then he also had one on his big live feed camera 
and both of those picked up a little girl's voice. It's just amazing. And he also got scratched that night and had his backpack pulled on it. And it's all captured. Like that's just the amazing thing is it's all on the live feed. And then uh, when he came back the second time, he did a solo session on the north side on the second floor. And he was up there in that big open apartment. And he all of a sudden came down after like 15, 20 minutes up there and said, and he had all of his stuff. He was like, man, I have to get out of here. Like, I just feel so nauseous. I feel drained. I feel dizzy. Um, and we still don't really know what's going on up there, but like something affected him so bad that he was, he just needed to get out of here. But he's not even the first one to experience that stuff. And he's not the only one. There's been a, a, multiple people that have had to actually cut their night short because of activity. And it, it, it still is a bat, it's still a mystery. This room has a little bit of a strange vibe. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like we're being watched right now. A little bit. It's kind of drawn to that corner. You can see where a door used to be, but it's not one now, but kind of this corner here. So, all right guys, so the sun is going down. I think it's about time for us to try and tackle the Westwood School here in Rudolph, Ohio. We've heard a lot of stories. We've heard a lot of hype. And I think now it's time for us to go lights out and start our investigation. So you guys ready to go? Yep, time to go lights out. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So you see it is zeroed out there. Yeah, you just gotta be very... Wait a minute. Hmm. What the f***? What? I had 40... I had over 40 minutes of battery left and it just dropped and it's flashing now. My whole battery just got drained on this camera. Like, look at this. I had 40... about 42 minutes of battery when we started this session and it just dropped to zero. Well, that's strange. Did someone go close to Brian? Come close to this in my hand. You're standing right about here, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to walk up to Steve there in his right hand and get close to that. Whoa. whoa. I'm trying. You didn't move your hand. I watched you. I had your hand in frame. Could you step in front of him again? I want to just move a little bit just to make sure. Yeah, it's not doing it. Okay. How? I, hit, I hit red. Yeah, that's that's strange. Okay, there we go. Battery low. My camera died. I'm going to give you a different battery here. That's very weird. Yeah. And I had 43, 45 minutes of battery, yeah. and we only filmed that for two minutes. If that. Now again, the only power is pretty much down in this little area here. So if this milligoss goes off, I'll let you guys know. And once we get to a part where we're going to focus on an area, then I'm going to put the rim pod on and set it down back away from it. Okay. 
Do you guys want to start in the boiler room or the locker room or? Let's go back into the actual like locker locker rooms. Okay. okay. The actual haunted attraction that went through here really decorated up this locker room. So I'll do a camera to lead and a camera to follow. Okay. For sure there's no power. An actual outlet. Was that you, Dave? What? I heard that. You didn't like bump into the wall or anything? No, I didn't move. Yeah, that was like. Oh. What? what? What was that? I don't know. Something just knocked on something back there. That's what we heard. That's what, that was made twice. Hello? Was that you, Dave? What? I heard that. You didn't like bump into the wall or anything? No, I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, I was like, Whoa. what? What was that? I don't know. Something just knocked on something back there. That's what we heard. That's a creepy ass face on the wall beside you, Dave. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice it when I was standing there. I didn't notice it in the walkthrough until just now. <laughs> There's a creepy face in the wall. What the hell? <laughs> that thing's cold. And to keep in mind that there's no one in here with us, we would hear them walking or like sneaking away because of how dirty this floor is. Yeah. It's so gritty. I mean, it's almost like a walk. I'm in like moccasin like shoes. Yeah. And that's me just tiptoeing. Who was it that was knocking behind Dave there? What's that? Did you hear it? Stop, stop, stop. Dude, that was loud. That was like right there. Hello? That I just heard a voice, dude. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, that was a voice. We would like for whoever is down here with us to come into this room and walk right over to that bike where there's a little light and try and take that bike. Would you do that, please? Just once? What? I thought I just removed him back this hallway right here. We mean no harm, we mean no disrespect. My name's Steve. My friends Ryan and then Dave. We're actually from West Virginia. We're not from around here. We just came to visit. We do have permission to be here. Is that okay with you? This is what, the boys' locker room? This was, yes, the boys' This was the boys' locker room?
What do you feel? I've got pain in my left arm. I don't feel sick like I did earlier, though. Just back in my tricep. Being watched. I feel like something is like playing, kind of like a hide and go seek type thing with us or something. Maybe. Did you not hear that? No. I just heard another voice right as you were speaking. Something behind, was behind you. I heard something behind you. It might have been a sound, it was like some kind of sound, maybe a voice. It, it sounded like, like a female voice. Yes, it was very soft. Are you playing hide and go seek with us? Would you give us a clue where you're at by making a knocking sound? Or by maybe pushing something over? What was that? I don't know. Was that, if that was you knocking for us, could you do that one more time? There was, there was. Did you hear it? Barely. It's more than one. What direction did that come from? In the room that we were first standing in. Let's go back in there, then we told them we were gonna play hide and go seek and we would follow them by knocking. With a knocking. Oop. There's a chair there. <laughs> Almost metallic, wasn't it? Yeah. And we have pretty good ears in this room, too, because the recorder's right there on the windowsill. Uh -huh. So we came back over. We think you gave us a clue where you're, where you're at. Are you in this room? What's your name? What grade are you in? Are you down there? Just so you know, we're not on the side of the veil that you were. So we're unable to see you. But we do have ways of maybe catching, capturing your voice or your message, or, or if you want to tell us your name. At any point during the night, anytime you see a device in our hands with a red light on it or an orange light, like down there in the windowsill, there's a good chance that device could capture your name or if you have a message. And you are more than welcome at any point to approach one of those devices and let us know what you have to say. If there's anyone here with us, could you please walk up to me and use this box to speak? Hello. My name's Ryan, that's Dave, that's Steve back there. Can you say one of our names? I just heard something like, I just heard like footsteps like shuffling in here. I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Who was that walking back in here? Can you shut that door right there? Can you push it shut?
Looks kind of quiet now. Yeah. I'm going to grab this. Okay. Right. We're going to go try and talk to the chalk man. And so her daughter um, was apparently talking to somebody and seeing somebody that she called the chalk man. The chalk man. Get the mail with the REM pod running right here. Just sit, sit in the tray. You got an EMF, of course, the vibration meter right there. Okay. Good to go. Alright, so we are running the Estes here at the Westwood School. Dave is right over there, listening to the recording, listening to the spirit box sweep. Steve and I are standing over here by the door. Now this upstairs area here is where a former tenant, uh, her daughter kept seeing this strange figure that they called the Chalk Man. Right. And they would have lights turn on and off. They would have a lot of strange things happen up here. So you even had the report of them seeing an outline of a man in chalk on the actual chalkboard. Yes. Which would be right there behind Dave. Yeah. So there's a crucifix right over there beside Dave right now. And here in a minute to see if it's doing anything to dampen the activity, Steve is going to remove that crucifix. And we're going to see if we can get that to ramp up some of the activity. So let's see what happens. Is there a such entity named the Chalk Man? We're addressing where you're wanting to talk, communicate with the Chalk Man. Are you here? human being at one time? Or are you something else, Mr. Chalkman? I can hold pins and needles on my left side right now. I thought I heard a voice there. Did you? Yeah. That was weird. Was Mr. Chalkman? Mr. Chalkman. I'm getting all the pins and needles on my left side right now. I thought I heard a voice there. Did you? Yeah. We used to flip the lights on and off when Kelsey lived here. Is anyone here still teaching? You may. You may what? We heard a story up here that they used to lock bad students in the closet. Even if they were special needs kids. I don't know if either one of you are close to me, but I kind of feel an energy closing in around me. No. We're really far back, Dave. Who's walking towards Dave? Tell him your name. Whoa, EDI is going off beside Dave. I'm feeling some kind of energy. I don't know what it is. He has his eyes closed, too. I'm pretty sure he has no idea. He couldn't see it anyway. No. It's behind him. Yeah. Right there, that's proof that Dave was feeling something and he didn't even realize, but right after he felt something, the EDI plus meter picked up on a drop in temperature as well as a change in the environment. I believe the air pressure light also went off. I was moving my camera. Yeah. Because I swear, and you weren't moving. 
Something blocked out my Feelings view. Feelings gone. Something blocked out my view of that red light on the rim pod. Didn't set it off, but something passed in front of it. Right now, right behind you. And I've got pins and needles all over me right now. Did you leave and go behind me? Set one of these other meters off if you left. What I was going to say is, is it's validation. He felt it, and the meter confirmed what he was feeling, that there was something going on strange in the environment around him. Because even if, like I said, even if his eyes were open, he wouldn't see it because mm -hmm. it's behind him. Right. It's amazing. Walk over there really quick and pull out that crucifix. Okay. Steve's going to go take the crucifix away. Really? Yeah. I do not feel good about what I'm not doing that. What the f was that? that? What was that? It sounded like something just got pushed over me. Yeah. Thank you. I think I heard thank you. That's so weird, dude. We moved this. We heard that. We got thank you. We might have said something. What the f was that? Wait, listen, listen, listen. Holy crap. I just heard a man talking. Hold on. Okay, I'm staying with Dave. Okay. Austin? Austin? We would have, we would have heard this. There's nobody in here, man. We would have heard the motion detectors go off. That's right, we would have. What the hell was that? I just heard a man's voice too right afterwards. Are you happy that we removed that crucifix from the chalkboard? I can't hear you guys, but can you shake your camera up or down or left or right? Did you move the cross yet? Yes. Okay. Let's, let's tell him. I just don't want to waste too much time doing this. I don't know what's going on. All right. I, I'm not hearing anything. Okay. This, I want to put this back. I'm putting the cross back. Dude. Dude, you won't believe what fucking happened. What? Are you going to turn that off? Okay. Here we set it off. Okay. All right. Ryan said I should probably go over and remove the things. I figured you, you would tell me walking. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hit code. I removed, <laughs> this is crazy, removed the, the crucifix. We both were over there in that doorway the entire freaking time. Even when you said it, if you guys walked up to me, you weren't even there. Both of us talked to him, we were sitting over there. And the EDI went off when you said you felt something right after, around you. Right after that. That was crap. Okay, that was before. And I came over, I removed the crucifix, went over there, and we heard something heavy as hell got moved upstairs or somewhere else in the building. And then soon after that, you go, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we heard a loud sound again, then you heard a male voice after that. I thought Austin came in the building. I'm like, yeah, he looked. Like, I was so... I was so convinced that there was somebody in this building. I walked up the stairs and was screaming Austin's name. That's yes. how convinced I was there was somebody in this building. It was, oh, wow. it was so chilly. As soon as I did that, you heard me go, thank you. I got pins and needles all over my <laughs> freaking body. Steve's eyes were watering so bad it looked like he was like, crying. I was holding the crucifix and I was starting to feel slightly nauseous. Yeah, there was some kind of voice that just yeah. came through there. Yeah. You want to give it two more minutes? Yeah. 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 We'll go right back to where we were. I, di I did also notice that when you put that crucifix back, yeah. the EDI meter was going off. Was it? Yeah. All right, if you're a spirit in here, 
listen to us, talk to us. Did Steve moving that crucifix, did he set something free whenever he moved that away? I have to go. I have to go. It sounded like a child. <laughs> Take the ring with us. We'll grab you one. I'm gonna grab this other ring. Remember, we have both. Oh, wait, wait. That's not what you heard, is it? No. It was heavier than that. That thing's been stuck there all night. Was that door open all the way when we walked through here? Couldn't tell you. That thing's been stuck there all night. Was that door open all the way when we walked through here? That thing's been stuck there all night. Was that door open all the way when we walked through here? That thing's been stuck there all night. Was that door open all the way when we walked through here? No. All right, Austin told us that there's something up here that likes to pull on people and grab people and make people sick. Just, you, they say your energy is too overwhelming. It makes people Ooh, that was weird. It's felt a weird sensation on my arm. It could have been placebo, though. It could have been matrixing. Because I've got, like... It could have been matrixing. Because I've got, like... Matrixing. Because I've got, like... It got really cold here on my left-hand side. I was just going to say I'm feeling pins and needles right now. Yeah. It got really cold. So I was feeling sick earlier when we first got started. Was that from someone from this school? Why was I sick? And who did it? Who caused it? Pulsating ball just flew right into Steve's head. Really? Could have been dust, but it was kind of weird timing. Are you trying to affect me? I will admit I am like I'm feeling I'm still feeling that pins and needles feeling pretty much all over my body. But it's not a, it's not super intense. Why do you enjoy making people feel sick? If you like doing it over there's a red light. If you like making people feel sick, and you go over there and touch the top of that device. You shouldn't ask, could you? Would you? We know you can do it. You always get the feeling that someone or a group of people introduced or brought something into the building. We know you're in here. Go over to that red light or move one of these chairs in here. We just came here to communicate. Again, my name's Steve. The two of my best friends, Ryan and Dave. We just came here to communicate with anyone or anything that is willing to. We think we may have released something over in the other room that has the cross or the crucifix. Who or what was released? When Steve moved it, we think we heard you, and we think we heard you say thank you to us. There's something over in that corner. I don't a big deal about it because we're probably not going to be able to see it, probably not going to be able to hear it. What was that? I heard that. Here. That wasn't you? No, I thought it sounded like it came from that kitchen back there behind Steve. 
Really? Okay. It might have acted weird for me, but I, I definitely heard something. We so just heard you. Is that what Steve is feeling back there in that corner? Standing on end. Yeah. Make your way over to that little red light. What? Steve, you all right? Please tell me what you guys had a freaking camera in this direction. I was feeling. I it. saw right to left. I saw movement and it broke over the white stove. I was I was One filming my Dave. Glasses, on my glasses, it was it was like a black shadow. Not as not as established as what Polly got. Yeah. But I saw freaking enough to see movement. It was about five feet, four four and a half to five feet tall, from what I could see. I'm sure you probably had a lot of fun times here. I'm sure probably some bad times, but it's like that in any school. Very strange, like, I I don't feel that energy at all anymore. I got one last little jolt of energy, like, came up right at me. But. It was weird because, like, I can't remember what we were saying, but it was like, the whole room got super silent. Yeah. And then Steve started feeling something in that corner back there, and then saw a shadow. I swear. I swear I saw it. I saw, I saw movement. Enough to be movement. 133. I know at least once before we start packing up and leaving, I want to just take a quick walk back by myself into that auditorium. I know you said you don't want to go back there. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to walk back there for a few, Steve and I can start packing up. Yeah. They're in here packing up. And I am going to go by myself back into the area that Austin said was one of the more intense areas. This is back in the auditorium, which is normally off limits. Yes. And uh, they're gonna pack up here. This camera here is to prove that we're in here while he's over there. Nobody's gonna be messing with him. Steve and I are gonna be setting, <coughs> packing up all of our equipment. And that camera that they have set up in there is to prove that there's that they're in there. So let's do this. I shouldn't be able to hear them. We've got our double face rig. I have this camera to film in front of me while this camera is gonna be filming me. So are they disturbed? Yeah, for what they are. <clears throat> Back into the auditorium. This is where Austin felt something thrown at his foot. I hear water dripping. Is there someone in here with me? Is there someone that wants to come out and talk? My name's Ryan.
Austin told me that this was one of the most active places back here, that they get so much communication back here. There's a lot of water dripping, guys. What is that? Hello? What the f was that? It wasn't that. That door doesn't budge. If that was you moving a door, could you do it again for me? That's not what I heard. That's water coming through. But that's not what I heard. longer guys I don't have much longer All right, everyone, so this is kind of interesting. The Westwood School kind of caught us off guard. We caught some really weird and interesting paranormal activity that we really couldn't explain. Well, that thing's been stuck there all night. Was that door open all the way when we walked through here? It could have been matrixing. Because I've got like... What the f was that? that? What was that? It sounded like something just got pushed over, man. Yeah. But just remember, hit that like button down below. Don't forget if you're new here to hit that subscribe button and also turn on bell notifications and set them to all so that you're notified every time we upload a new video. We upload brand new paranormal investigation videos every single week. And until next time, guys, we hope that you stay safe out there and come right here and join us for our paranormal quest. See you next week. To book a paranormal investigation at the Old Westwood School, contact us at facebook.com slash the UGPN. That's T-H-E-U-G-P-N. Carpe noctum, folks. What the f***? What is on the ground here? Oh, this is... Oh. I thought the cruise. Oh my god. I thought the cruise effects fell. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> scary old Did you hear Jay say he's putting up there? <laughs> I forgot that he put I'm that. old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. My freaking heart. Dave, Dave, Dave. For the other reasons. Dropped to both knees. And I went this way. Oh, I the wall. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Oh my god. I saw that <laughs> lay on the ground in the dark and I thought it was the crucifix. That's the end of this episode. <laughs> we'll see you next weekend.